Welcome to Critical Junction, episode 21. I'm Mark. I'm Luke. I'm Jill. So, uh, this year marks the 70th anniversary of the infamous Roswell incident, so we decided to take an entire hour and talk about the facts and fiction surrounding what may or may not have, occur have occurred in uh, New Mexico 70 years ago. Uh, so in case anyone is unfamiliar with what happened in Roswell, uh, or unfamiliar with the UFO incident in particular, uh, in the summer of 1947, a gentleman named Mac Brazel found some unusual debris in his sheep field, um, which consisted mostly of a mass of metallic sticks held together by tape, chunks of plastic and tinfoil reflectors with a few scraps of heavy glossy paper-like material strewn about the area. So uh, concerned with what that mass of material was, he contacted the local sheriff, and depending on which account you want to believe, uh, the sheriff either loaded that material into the trunk of his car and carted it away, or the uh, Roswell Army Air Force came in and shoved it into a bunch of trucks and carted all that away as well. So, um, in 1994, the, uh, uh, there was a, a report put together uh, which insisted on documenting what happened during the Roswell incident as, in as much detail as possible, and they determined that it was, uh, well, what, the stuff that crashed was part of what they called Project Mogul. Uh, so Mogul consisted of basically a high-altitude balloon kind of thing that was responsible like for a, monitoring. Like the weather balloon thing. Almost a weather balloon. Which was, we'll get back to that Almost, in a it hadn't made it. It hadn't so, made the cut. So, <laughs> this, the, they were claiming that when they came out with the weather balloon story, it was to cover up for this Project Mogul right. secret I see project. Okay. So, yeah, a couple of days after uh, the guy reported the, the crash of whatever to the uh, either sheriff or army, or Air Force rather, um, the paper, the local paper, published a headline saying the uh, uh, RAAF captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. So a few days later, Air Force yep. comes in and retracts that statement, saying that it was in fact a crashed weather balloon. Um, right. So during the investigation in 1994, they declassified a bunch of information and put out that it was in fact part of Project Mogul, which was responsible for monitoring high altitude sound waves to look out for nuclear, um, Russian nuclear tests. So that's the official standpoint. Um, now, people of the UFO persuasion insist that Air of Force's the UFO persuasion. <laughs> they insist that uh, the Air Force was covering up a crashed, unidentified flying object which originated from somewhere beyond Earth. So let's start there. Are we willing to accept the official explanation, or are we more of the what I just termed the UFO persuasion? <laughs> well. Do we know, like at this time, because uh, I know that, that after Roswell, UFOs was certainly very popular in, in, in popular culture. Like it, it, it was in the media, you know, sci-fi stories were coming out about UFOs and stuff. But did that exist before Roswell or did Roswell seem to kick that off sort of thing? Like In a way, uh, Roswell kind of popularized the UFO phenomenon in the general public. Like prior to that, it was like mostly sci-fi type stuff, right? Um, and I think that's what kind of led to people becoming more willing to accept the idea that Roswell was, in fact, an alien spaceship that crashed in the desert in New Mexico. Right, right. Like, it serves to have culturally, really, it, it sets it off. Right. So Roswell's the beginning of us. Yeah, well, if, if uh, not the beginning, it's certainly kind of a catalyst for the whole UFO movement. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, it, like, it, it ingrained itself in popular culture. It was, it's the most popular UFO story out there. Um, so, yeah. yeah. It's like the granddaddy of all UFOs. Right, stories. exactly. But, you know, they, they did put out this thousand-page report, you know, Roswell case closed, and it documents absolutely everything. It corroborates. You can go out there, and this is what I, what I keep, when I keep talking about independently verifiable evidence, this is that kind of stuff. Everything in that report, you can independently go and verify. You know, you can, you can look up the results of Project Mogul. You can corroborate that with the university who's in charge of putting this thing together, you, you, and you can determine where these pieces of crashed UFO, quote-unquote, came from. It is, it is a downed balloon. That's exactly what it was. Um, now, they, they mention, quote-unquote, hieroglyphs on some of these stick-like things as part of the debris. Um, it was later determined that, uh, due to, I think it was due to cost measures, but they hired a toy company uh, to, put this, to put the <laughs> tape together because, you know, again, cost-saving measures, right? And they contacted this toy company during the 1994 investigation and they found the exact piece of tape with those markings on it. So it's not some kind of alien language. It's just some funky, wistful toy maker tape 
used to hold the sticks together for this balloon. So there's no alien writing on it. It's just fucking toy tape. Really? Yeah. I haven't heard In fact, that. Joe uh, on Joe Rogan's show. So you've uh, just debunked Roswell, is, is what you're what you're saying? I like, didn't do it, but uh, yeah, it, well, well, it no, has I, been debunked. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, like on Joe Rogan's show, they actually show a piece of this modern tape, which matches precisely the eyewitness drawing of the writing on this stick thing. But since the eyewitness drawing has been out there for years, is it not possible that they just produced a tape? No, was it after the fact to you, you match can, the drawing? You can trace the trademark back to like the the origin of mm. like you know back in 1947. This is mm. when they started oh, okay. producing this thing. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like that is that is independently verifiable. Like you know that it was produced around the same time. Whoa, you can. It came. It. it comes from this company, and it was manufactured for this purpose. You know, and uh, for what purpose at the time to, well, to look like UFOs? Because no, no, it was manufactured to act as like some kind of adhesive. Right. No, but what I mean is, is, is the, the the funky characters and all that. I mean, that the toy company produced. That they were they were trying to get at some type of effect, right? They were drawing on some type of possibly, yeah. So, but so the point is, like that they the, were they were already trying to make toys. So children about are aliens. The UFO genre. <clears throat> I don't think something. they were necessarily doing that. But no, it's it's just the fact that the the tape that they used is the tape that they found at Roswell. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that much, that has been debunked, but still people insist on believing that this is some kind of alien writing and that, you know, a UFO crashed in that cheap field. Um, they also argue that they found bodies uh, yeah. strewn among the uh, The, the children trying to hold the tape onto the thing. Because they were like, that's our tape, that's our tape. <laughs> children <laughs> trying to hold the tape on. <laughs> yeah. Didn't work. In this high atmosphere balloon. They yeah, said, the they said children up there to hold the tape on. <laughs> But there was a, the the original eyewitness testimony had it mentioned nothing about bodies being found. People are conflating high altitude. Wait, dumb the original t- eyewitness testimony? Yeah, there there was no mention of bodies being found in the Roswell debris. That comes later. What about the mortician, uh, Glenn? Uh, yeah, these are all stories that eventually became conflated with the Roswell original story. Mm. Like uh, eventually, as time goes on, people who were at certain events. And what about Marcel himself? So, so there's this um, the the dude guy, this Jesse Marcel, the dude who was guy. actually uh, uh, um, in the Air Force, and he was the guy that was called out first to go and check out the site, and um, and so he had collected, he had gone there with one or two other guys, I think, at first, and collected up some stuff, uh, collected up debris. And was flying back to uh, uh, to the airbase or whatever, and in between the, the the flight back to the to the airbase, the the that that original report had gone out in the in the, the local paper about a flying saucer having been found, mm-hmm. uh, and that had been noticed and picked up by a bunch of other. Uh, by a bunch of other papers everywhere, so they were repeating the story that was reported in the local Roswell right. thing, and so that got the attention of the, the the brass, the military brass, who decided to to say, whoa, 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 let's shut all this shit down. Right. And apparently, when by the time uh, Jesse Marcel had landed at the um, uh, at the base where they were gonna uh, uh, catalog all this uh, debris and stuff. Uh, he gets there and, you know, there's this famous picture of him actually holding up like a piece of the foil. Right. So if you look up the Roswell incident, you'll, you're likely to see this picture of him holding up some debris and he's got like, can attach he's got it. like a funny smile on his face mm-hmm. and, and it, there's like this foil, which is. So sort of like the famous the, the photo that ran as part of the, uh, the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently, so so in the '70s, like like many years later, Marcel comes out and says that um, the '70s or maybe 1980 even, um, and he died shortly after that. Uh, but um, he comes out saying that that debris that that he's pictured with and that he he was looking at and uh, uh, after he landed was stuff that the military gave them to say, okay, this is the debris you found. Mm-hmm. And he and he claims that no, that's not what we found in the field. What we found in the field was this this like 
a, a, a totally alien tech right. uh, uh, See, here, stuff. Here's my issue with that. There are divergent stories of what happened on that night. Like I said during our introduction, one story has it that it was just the sheriff who took the stuff out and put it in the trunk of his car. Right. The other story is that the military immediately swept into the area and had multiple vehicles picking up a whole bunch more debris. Wait, than which are you saying is more likely? Uh, the one I think is more likely, I, I don't know. See, that's the problem. Well, I right, don't. this is just your opinion sort of thing. What, what do you mean? Which you're about to state here, like in terms of more probable. I'm not, I'm not stating which is more probable. Oh, okay. I'm saying my issue is we don't know which is more probable. We I don't see. know what actually happened because there are divergent stories depending on which right. eyewitness account you're, you're, you're listening to. Which do you think is more suggestive of a UFO cover-up and which do you think is more suggestive of just a balloon having cracked there? I, personally, I'm more willing to accept that it was just a balloon that crashed because of the, the giant sure. corroborative report. But hold sure, on, but which, the... which, of those, which of those stories about whether or not the stuff was gathered up by the sheriff? I'm going sheriff. Okay, so you think that's what happened yeah. and that it was a balloon. <laughs> so uh, this, this is something that I find funny because if it was uh, an experiment by the Air Force base that, that was nearby mm -hmm. there... Um, I guess, is that Alan Alamogordo? Yeah. So they were indeed doing uh, these kinds of experiments with, uh, with, with balloons and with even with re-entry re uh, craft right. uh, um, that had a saucer shape. Right. Uh, and you can, you can find old, uh, old declassified video of yeah, this stuff. Yeah. Um, if it was one of their experiments, then why wouldn't it have been them themselves that swarmed that area as, as soon as it crashed? If they're conducting an, an experiment, they're monitoring it, aren't mm -hmm. they? Like, yeah, but I don't think they, like, just due to the nature of this, it? due to the nature of the balloon itself, they couldn't monitor its exact, its exact location at all times, right? It was just, it, that was one of the problems with Project Mogul that had it shut down, is it was so unpredictable. Just because of like the wind current that they had you can at that time, yeah, yeah, it could float off in the high anywhere. atmosphere. Like a, a wind right. current can catch a balloon that can go like yeah, exactly. Like they uh, hundred miles an hour. Yeah, uh, and that's yeah. that's one of the reasons why this thing got shut down. It was so unpredictable, and like it got results, but they didn't know where this damn thing was at any given moment, right? So I I just think it's more likely that the sheriff was the one to immediately pick up the the debris because he was the one who was contacted, and like he got yeah. there first. Right. Can, can we look at this in terms of uh, who has something to gain by lying and who has something to lose by saying certain things and, and see if we can try and adjust credibility there? Sure. Like, uh, because if it is a cover-up, um, you know, the government and the sheriff could be in on it sort of thing. So we have to So there's no question that there's a cover-up because at the time they wouldn't have wanted, even if even Project Mogul, they wouldn't have wanted that to be known. Yeah, it was because the Cold because War. it's the Cold War. Like it's right after right. World War. II. Everything's secret. Everything is secret. Right. And they're actually trying trying to to, to develop technology that counters uh, right, right, an right. actual state enemy. Right. They didn't um, want the Russians finding out that they had this balloon monitoring their nuclear tests. So, so yeah. the te technological advances at that time so, that they're affiliating to UFO technology, it, it just makes sense that we're looking at building up technology at this time. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the thing is, the, the, the fact that there's a cover-up doesn't tell us what the cover-up might be about or what it's for. So, so the fact that there's a cover-up makes things mysterious and kind of uh, uh, provides like a, a brewing ground for, mm -hmm. for uh, conspiracy theories. For conspiracy. That kind of yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Um. Yeah. Um, so th 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 there's there's with these uh, different uh, conspiracies. Um, the funny. So one of the things that struck me was that as they're coming out with this debunking information, the state and and the Air Force and and uh, the CIA and and you know the whole apparatus, they're they're constantly coming out with information to either throw the trail off of, uh, uh, throw the scent off of the, 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 the Project Mogul trail or off of UFO trail or off of, you know, whatever other secret projects that maybe we don't, they, they never revealed, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so the funny thing is, is with the Roswell incident in particular, they 
they talk about the 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 the, the project mogul balloon eventually. Uh, they and and initially they talk about uh, weather balloon. Uh, then they also talk about like these uh, reentry dummy uh, uh, programs where they're they're testing um, high altitude parachuting and and and, yeah. and dropping. Uh, and so they're they're using dummies. Then they also talk about the use of animals in in some of this testing that that Good. might have even started that might have even started far before like the uh, the, the the initial chimp that. Uh, that we see in like space, space te- the space chimp there that that's being tested in the fifties, I think at that point. Yeah, the Russians put a chimp in space. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, remember. they put a dog. They put the in dog. Space. Yeah. What, yeah. Was, what was the dog's name again? I can't remember. Laika. Laika. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the chimp Leica didn't make it, or did make it? No, Laika never made it. Laika <laughs> Leica, Leica was launched into space and left there. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it's 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 like a cute story. They made a hero out of uh, out of this like because little they two felt character, bad. Yeah, yeah. but nobody talks about <laughs> the fact that the what they actually <laughs> did was launch this There's poor little animal in space and into then. space. Wow. And then they just left it there, left it to freeze and die. Yeah. But yeah, about like just let's consider the amount of time that that took mm-hmm. place. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Before that, no, no Mark. No, no. no. I was I was going I was going somewhere. Okay, let's do that. So they've got the weather balloon project mogul. Re-entry dummies, uh, animal testing. They also uh, talk about uh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, uh, these uh, these uh, re-entry vehicles that are saucer shaped or, or, or round or even pyramid uh, shaped. Um, so they've got all these these different things, and then and then in some instances they claim that all of this together is what was. What was seen at Project, uh, uh, sorry, at Roswell. Yeah, which is completely unlikely. When you're doing experiments, you're trying to limit the uh, the, the variables. Yeah, and that's... you're not going to start mixing up a whole bunch of different experiments right. at once to yeah. start throwing off all your data. See that that's the point I was going to make. So thank you for making it first. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like it, you're going to be concentrating on one experiment at a time. But the mm-hmm. other the other aspect is, like I was going to say, was the amount of time that took place between 1947 and now. It's 70 years. That's a yeah. 70 year time frame for all of these individual experiments to take place individually at different points and eventually become conflated into one story of the Roswell right. incident. Right. With, uh, and that's precisely what happened. Flawed memory. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah, so the the dummy drop that you were mentioning happened in the 1950s, right? And the Air Force dropped a bunch of dummies to see what the what the result would be of high impact, high altitude drops. These dummies were like gray skinned, weird looking things with virtually no features, and immediately the the Air Force would rush in and cart them off. So to anyone looking onto this thing, it would seem really weird, and these things would look kind of alien, right? So all of a sudden, are they recovering alien bodies? This happened in the same general area as the Roswell incident. So these two things eventually become melded into one story. So that's, yeah. That Meanwhile, there was some aliens doing some farming, and they just happened to be hitting the aliens, so they do actually have to scoop up the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going with. <laughs> the dummies caused the crash with the alien craft. <laughs> And so they had to collect both the dummies and the aliens, and then they started doing autopsies, but they mistakenly did the autopsies on the dummies, and the aliens were sent to the incinerator. Oh, Jesus. And that's why we don't have any that's evidence. That's why we don't have the evidence. <laughs> well, speaking of the alien autopsies, have you guys seen that uh, the grainy alien autopsy footage back in the, remember, like, in the late 90s when they came out? Oh, the out Fox, uh, the I Fox TV like, uh, I think one. I saw like a Jonathan Frakes narrated special on that's it right, that's, an that's hour, but they had, like, they had like, what, 10 minutes of footage, but they made that a whole hour special. Oh, yeah. Thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was pretty well done, though. It was. For, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For a fake, it's a pretty damn good fake. Although the my, ten minutes. My favorite so, alien footage is that one where they ha- it's black and white uh, footage of the interview with an alien that starts coughing. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm talking about? Yeah. I love that one. That's they had like he's. I oh. haven't seen that one. Oh, it's like, awesome. Coughing? We're we're posting this. Can we post that one? We will post. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah he's giving an, the aliens giving an interview about how uh, everyone is kind of the same consciousness, just living a different facet of universal life kind of deal and he was sent here on a mission to observe um, because his species is actually a further evolved version of humanity and we destroy ourselves with nuclear war so he, he was sent here to kind of figure out if that's in, in fact what happened and why there's no evidence of where he came from I think is 
Was that the general idea of the, uh, the interview? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, is this the one where it's like in a dark room? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then the guy, at, like the last question is is a question about his morality. That's what is the he based yeah, his morality? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I think that's the... a machinima. Uh, that's like a, uh, uh, for a video game. I think, oh, I think well, it's a, either it's way, a computer it's great. animated. Yeah, it, it awesome. looks really cool. Yeah. Well, I also uh, like it. it's it's the dialogue that's great too, like what what it's saying. Oh, it's certainly yeah, so, sort of. Except it, um, like the dialogue of the interviewer is so of this time with the interviewer starting every dialogue, single the lingo, fucking question right, yes. with the okay, so okay, so yeah, it's you very... know, said okay, so in nineteen forty seven. Okay, so like like okay, so like so like you guys, so you guys, you guys like. <laughs> Like, okay, so like, uh, life, like alien, like wait, wait, like like what should we do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, totes, we should totes. Yeah. So, Either so way, though, that's other a big than tip that, off to that movie, you're right yeah. that that's that's the Real fuck pain. up there. Yeah, I think they had a linguist examine the, that the, the footage and come to that same conclusion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it makes sense. Right. But otherwise, I took a linguistics course if, once. If, if so, I know. You're a totes expert. So next time you're making a video <laughs> like this, experts. please get a linguist involved to make it more accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Fool us all the better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, it, I mean it was a cool video, but but it, it, looked, it's... it looked fake to me. It, lo- it looked like it looked like computer animation, like the right. way the thing moves and the way its mouth moves and mm. everything. It's 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 what I know of how computer animation looks. Yeah, it looked very manufactured. If you like, if you break it down, you, can, yeah. you can tell it's just it's a, CGI. To me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was looking at it. Um, very low uh, quality, so it looked Plus, great to me. Plus, <laughs> you would never do an official interview with something like that that you're so interested in in a dark room. Yeah, why would you want, you, you, oh, you right. want right, full right. ceiling lights. And they would have offered him smokes. Them. Like, the thing would be smoking cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's why I was coughing. It just needed to smoke. <laughs> you this fake smoking looking like a... Well, it's super, like, <laughs> film noir yeah, yeah. kind of style. <laughs> it, yeah, it looks a little still... bit like that. Like a colorized film yeah, noir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like DOA, but with aliens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you guys have uh, debunked Roswell, though. In general, there's right? been a lot of debunking of Roswell throughout the years. I, I'm I'm actually a little less certain about uh, 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 about the debunkingness than really you are. Mark. Let's, let's hear let's hear why. No, um, I mean I don't have no. Once again, Mark, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> no, for the some of the reasons that I've already stated, like the 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 idea that they're like kind of gish galloping us by throwing out all this different stuff some of which was classified some of which isn't classified some of which is 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 completely made up we know for a fact the weather balloon story is completely made up well the the reason they Um, made up the weather balloon story is because like they it was still a classified experiment at the time right no i i I get that they're 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 lying to the people in general at this time exactly they're lying to people in general not at this time all the time all the time (laughs) sorry yes of course (laughs) (laughs) even i was confused for a moment guys they got me um yeah so so the the fact that they're coming up with all of these different stories all the time um I don't know. It, it, it makes it it makes it makes it uncertain. It makes it uh, maybe unfalsifiable. Mm. The whole thing, you know, like like. I don't. I don't think that's necessarily. I don't. True. I don't. I, I haven't seen any like the. You're talking about uh, uh, some some uh, independent, independently verifiable mm-hmm. evidence against Roswell. Right. You mentioned the, the the tape thing. The tape thing, and apparently a patent for that tape that dates back to yeah. <laughs> Where did you find this, and and is there other evidence aside from that one? Yeah, it's a whole like it's a it's a the report I found is like two hundred and fifty four pages. So in two weeks I didn't have time to go through all of okay, the damn this thing. One, this is the one called Roswell case closed. Case closed. Yeah. So okay. it was and commissioned was... by a uh, a Republican senator, I think, in, in the in late nineties, nineteen ninety four. Uh, like he wanted good the year, truth of what good happened. Good year for rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to get to the bottom of this whole Roswell conspiracy, so he commissioned a report and got to what is believed to be the bottom of it, just because, you know, they went through all the eyewitness testimonies, they went through, uh, you know, pretty much everything that they could find about Roswell. They went through Project Mogul, they went through the dummy drops that were conflated with the rest of the Roswell story. So what they've done, though, is just confirmed those those other programs or projects. Or... Sure. Yeah, like, they confirmed the existence of these other programs. But, but, but that doesn't confirm that those programs are the cause of the the Roswell myth 
Well, that's what I'm saying. Like during that, they're during that seventy year time frame. Those stories got conflated, right? Right. Because again, the original. Well, this is this is, like that sounds like the the like a reasonable explanation. Right. But. I'm but, more willing to accept a reasonable explanation. Than sure, 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 sure. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that the door is not completely closed for like that's not a definitive explanation. I'm not it's the it's, most reasonable. Yeah, I'm not saying it's definitive. Like nothing is ever 100% definitive. But this is the more reasonable and the more likely scenario, in right. my opinion. Right. Right. Be, just because a lot of confabulation. A lot of confabulation. The evidence is there yeah. to support it. You know, there isn't as much evidence for the conspiracy theory as there is for the official explanation. So I would tend towards the official explanation. Right. Personally. So in the spectrum of leaning, what what you know percentage of, of denial or what what do you? I guess you're saying it didn't happen. Uh, I, what I, would you give it? Ugh, I would hate to. I like putting you on the spot because you often start things off with a big statement, and then go. And what do you think? And <laughs> we're like, oh. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know if I can quantify that. But I, if I were to try, I'd say about ninety-eight yeah, percent. Okay. Yeah, pretty high. Okay. Like extremely high, really. Yeah, yeah. Jill, I'd say I'm probably at like seventy-five percent. Oh, okay. oh, wow. oh wow, that is a big that's, that's, discrepancy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it has to do with just my want to believe side. Mm, that's yeah. that's that's. that's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I really want there to have been. Yeah, I know. Because sure. if you take away Roswell, gee, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. it's pretty left. big. Well, that, yeah. like because I mean if uh, if if our um, if our being humans I mean are like the best that the universe has to offer like, well, that's I'm not, fucking I'm, depressing. <laughs> immediately I'm, I'm like not, impossible 100 <laughs> percent like I know how, I know I know how much I suck yeah. so uh, <laughs> the rest of the human species the rest of the human... sucks a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no, I'm not saying we're the penultimate expression of, of life in the universe. I'm just saying the likelihood of an alien species having vis A, visited us, and B, crashed mm -hmm. in that one area, and then C, the U.S. Air Force gathering all the evidence about it and creating this giant conspiracy seems rather unlikely to me. It just is true. based on strict probability, at, at, to me, that just it doesn't fly. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the whole crashing and leaving debris, they just wouldn't. Maybe they're not. smart enough there's, not to. Yeah, like if they're smart there's enough. There's no crashing. <laughs> they're looking down at us. If they're smart like enough to idiots. defy gravity and travel light years across the universe to visit us, and crash in a sheep field in New Mexico, fuck, that is a terrible way to go out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So, like, let's talk about this. Uh, this kind of the 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 likelihood or the probability angle of. Uh, of any of these uh, extraterrestrial beings visiting us. So you've got like the Drake equation mm -hmm. which sort of calculates out the likelihood of other intelligent beings existing in the universe. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Fermi paradox. And then you have the Fermi paradox right after where... where, where can, you guys, uh, can you describe these a little more? Okay, so the Drake equation he, he, he calculates like a uh, uh, so in uh, in in our, our galaxy we have so many solar systems and around uh, uh, so uh, around so at least a portion of these forever. solar systems there's uh, there's planets and around so many of these solar systems with planets um, not around but uh, with so many of these solar systems with planets there will be at least some that are in like the so-called sweet spot right. and uh, the that may be capable of uh, supporting life, or at least having that, conditions similar ours, to Earth. Yeah, right. Our so, so, so it calculates out that that you know there's there's virtually millions, and there has to be virtually millions and millions of planets uh, 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 out there that can right. so, that could support life, mm -hmm. and and so. Meanwhile, the Fermi paradox says that. Yeah, that came along. A few, some, some years later, yeah. where... where, where... It, it states that the probability of life existing on other worlds is kind of uh, countered by the lack of evidence to support their existence. Yeah, so, well, it was like a conversational thing. Fermi is, uh, is like in a bar or something, right, talking right. with somebody, and they're talking about, like, the Drake equation, and then Fermi just asks, well, where are they? Where the fuck is everybody? <laughs> right. I mean, I don't know. Really lack of evidence could just speak TF, for our but... <laughs> inability to collect it, you know? And, well, that, and, that's, you know? that's the kind of evidence that we would need in order to corroborate the existence of another civilization. 
So that's what we're looking for, and there is none. But the probability of another civilization existing is really, really high if you take the the uh, the Drake equation into into consideration. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's the problem. Right? I, I'm skeptical of our ability to collect it with certainty. I think that's our problem there. You know. Well, that's that's it. like like um, uh, these uh, science popularizers. You know, like Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson. They they've addressed uh, uh, like the Fermi paradox. They have their own explanation for for why it might be that we're not like the, seeing them even though they exist like the great filter you know uh, there are a certain amount of, of planets or civilizations that can evolve and of right. those uh you know the ability to develop high enough technology to travel to distant stars or whatever factoring in the probability of their own destruction you know or their mm -hmm. ability to, to survive beyond a certain level to get to that point right, right? so mm -hmm. this, this level that we're at right yeah, now like the, the, yeah. The so civilizations, civilizations might be blinking in, in and, and out, out of, of existence, existence right. uh, uh, like sequentially throughout the universe but just yeah. not really overlapping or at least you don't get civilizations that overlap that are close enough to, to maybe to communicate communicate or, or this kind of stuff Bill Nye, uh, he had he had said that maybe it's just that uh, that we're not listening for them. Maybe they are all out yeah, there. Yeah, but we're right. listening at the wrong in the wrong way. Right. right. We, we don't know how to listen. We've only been able to, to think about listening for like fifty years now. Yeah, yeah which and is not very long. No, no and, and we've mostly only been doing that with radio. Right. You know, and and the radio. likelihood of them. <laughs> we don't even listen to radio anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah the, like the. The radio waves that are propagating throughout our galaxy have only like if you're at a certain distance, you're hearing the 1940s. You're hearing Hitler speaking, right? Just, mm -hmm. just. Oh, they think we're great. <laughs> it's the like the 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 distance problem is something to consider as well, right? When we look at a distant star, we're looking at it millions of years in the past. The same mm -hmm. for if another civilization were looking at our star, yeah, they're looking at this us, is, they're looking is, at dinosaurs. This right? is our right. unevolved view, though. I mean, they would have a different view and could possibly see through space in a completely different way. And not if you, not if you factor in relativity, like you just you can't, you can't. No, but the that. thing is, the, the uh, uh, some of the ideas that have been proposed are that are that they use some kind of extra dimensional. Right. Uh, type of communication mm -hmm. or or remote viewing or whatever. Remote um, viewing. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, time well, and space may be much more malleable than we than we can possibly even imagine, and we don't even have the the language or yeah, the, the, the ideas to, to, to think about that right. or anything. You know? Neil Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about uh, how you know we experience the universe right now in a in a three uh, D or or technically four D counting time uh, uh, way, but we might actually be in a higher dimensional universe. Where we're just we're just perceiving for those di dimensions, but there might be other dimensions right. that uh, uh, that we could have access to. And he uses like an analogy of an ant on uh, on a, a table. Yeah. On, a, on a, uh, and you let's say you cover the the, the sheet with uh, sorry, you cover the table with sheets of paper, and there's an ant on on there, and you'll sit and and the ant can look around and see okay, there's sheets of paper surrounding me, mm -hmm. but if you just if you just reach down and pull a paper off the table, the ant really only sees the things that are on that two-dimensional plane that he's on. Mm -hmm. So to the ant, it doesn't look up or anything like that. But to the ant, that piece of paper just disappeared. Yeah. It's like the flatland right? thing, the flatland argument. If you're living in a two-dimensional universe, you can't possibly conceive of a third dimension. So anything traversing through your two-dimensional space just looks like a blinking flat, flat kind of light sequence. So... If you're able to kind of come up with a way to examine a higher dimension, you might start perceiving different ways. But we're we're rooted in three or four dimensions. Hold right on, now. let's not call no, it higher. Our let's not call it a higher dimension. Perception our is perception rooted. is limited to four, four dimensions. dimensions. Right, 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 right. So we like we can't we can't even but we have a very very difficult time perceiving a, a higher dimensional plane of existence. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just think like if you if you think about M theory, eleven dimensions is just fucking mind boggling. It's like folds and space and, and, and like other weird tesseract type explanations. I think officially officially the theory uh, um, has uh, has proposed ten dimensions. String and, theory proposed ten. And there's there's just an eleventh that is more recently kind of been. M theory says eleven. So string theory says ten. Oh, is that, okay. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, the, uh, uh, Tyson had this really great way of illustrating. Uh, uh, or, or, I'm sort sure of, or 
sort of making it making it comprehensible the idea of uh, of of more dimensions he talks about like are you how, talking about something that he narrated or something he's just no like an interview i saw oh, okay, okay. I, I saw it with so him. it is him so so he uh, he says think about a line a mm. line is connected uh, a line is a is a one dimensional ob object or, or concept that's connected by two zero dimensional objects, which are a point. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no height or width or depth or, or whatever. It's just a point. point. It's just a point. So a line is a one dimensional thing. It's got it's got length. That's it. And that's that's kind of delimited by two zero dimensional points. Um, a, a a square is a two dimensional object. Connecting that's four. that's limited by four one-dimensional uh, uh, concepts. A cube is um, is a three D concept that's limited by six uh, two-dimensional objects. So there's like a there's like a pattern emerging there, where where if you go one dimension more, you you can you can you can you know what uh, what what defines the limits of, of mm -hmm. that dimension so you can you can think of a four dimensional square as something that's limited by um by eight uh, three dimensional uh, three dimensional points. points in space points in space yeah, or yeah. cubes so the so, higher so, up you go the more exponential that uh, that explanation becomes right. You, you start going to higher levels. You start connecting these lower dimensions to form the greater whole. It's it's a fascinating explanation. Like it, it, if you, I, I think I listened to the same interview. Like it's a really cool explanation and kind of gets you thinking about how this whole higher dimensional thing actually would work. Uh, the math is there to back it up. Right. Um, so theoretically, it's a sound sound theory. M theory, string theory. They're they're really really good on paper. They're just extremely difficult to test. Uh, which is why they're making headway with the Large Hadron Collider uh, in some respect to see if they can back up the existence of other dimensions. Um, I think tachyons are one example of how a certain particle can pass between different dimensions. Uh, is, it, is it the tachyon? Like the tachyon is uh, postulated as being able to travel through time. So right. what they're saying is the, its ability to do that is granted by its ability to travel through dimensions, which is really cool when you think about it. Mm. Uh, the same could be said about quantum entanglement. Like the reason why two uh, two particles can have the same properties across vast distances is because they're kind of tunneling through other dimensions. <laughs> Mind blowing. Mind blowing. Hmm. Yeah. How do we get Wait, here? Are they are they really traveling, or are they just in the multiple dimensions at the same time? Well, that's just it. Like, and and visible uh, like it's the traveling is more visibility of it kind of thing. Well, it's just it's traveling. just that they they've learned that they can. They're they're like the ants that have learned that they can like look up. Yeah, or the flat. That's it. That's it. So they, it's just it's just that they they don't live in any different a universe than we do. It's just that perception that they they they've they've managed to develop a perception of. Other, in terms of popular culture stuff out there, have you seen Arrival yet? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so is that's a good example of of. Of what we're talking about, Interstellar is I Interstellar think another is one. another one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. two thousand one. I think yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe two thousand one. No, can't. Two thousand sure. two thousand one kind of kind of more directly connects to like these more kind of uh, in a way. Yeah, yeah, more more kind of conventional ideas. Of, yeah, because uh, yeah. th string theory and M theory ancient aliens and stuff too. during when uh, Wayne wrote two thousand one. This have, is you, more, have you read 2001? I, I started reading it. Oh, okay. It's really cool. But, yeah. yeah, it is a good book. I like it. Especially good at the end. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Is it different from the movie? Yeah. Uh, yes and no. It's, it's, it's symbolically, visually portrayed. You know, it, It's not as if it has that bit where he's traveling over like uh, digital landscapes or whatever the hell that was. No, it wasn't digital at the time. But those colorful landscapes and stuff, it's, it's described differently. Uh, but I can see how symbolically the images represent what he's what he's writing about. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they both. Uh, C. C. Clark was what's his name? Uh, Arthur C. Clark. Arthur C. Clark. C. C. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur C. Clark was involved in in uh, in the movie. Like they they worked yeah. hand in hand with that. Uh, so yeah, it's very very similar, mm -hmm. but but different at the same time. Like uh, he's a scientist writing that that shit, you know. So. Yeah, and but I it, guess it does kind of suggest that idea of. Um, 
uh, of uh, sort of time being being something that you can look at uh, uh, all at once you know so you see that guy go through all the at the end of the movie you see, right. you see the the main character go yeah, through yeah. all those different phases of his life like instantaneously like mm-hmm. that you know um which is kind of interesting isn't it because isn't that uh it's it's a, that kind of concept isn't really explored uh, much at that time. Yeah, no, not at the time. It's that's more of a recent development. Like the I, some physicists are postulating that time is one thing, and we're only perceiving slices of it at one given moment because well, like, of our ability to only do that. Um, whereas in reality, it's like this overarching, encompassing wholeness. I would will. suggest that Eastern philosophy always talked about it. So the idea has always been there. Oh, right. Okay. And so we could suggest that at the time yeah, that that story yeah. is written, uh, those things are very popular That's at true. that time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like around the turn of the century, Eastern philosophies came over to, to this side of the world and became pretty pretty pop, I guess, you know? <laughs> I would think. Like with yeah. Nietzsche and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's right. And his, his like uh, theory of eternal return that you guys mentioned. Right. Uh, that's right, Mark. You mentioned that last time, yeah. Did I? No, I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> no, you brought it up, and uh, Mark named it. Um, I'm yeah, glad that you guys can name the things that I bring up. Without <laughs> what I'm talking about. So Roswell, bring it right back. To well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Jill, uh, I think you're talking more about the ability to prove, and and basically just your your remaining skepticism, looking at it, and and looking at your own bias and stuff. Well, like so, that. so what, what strikes me is that there's all there's yeah. always. There, I, I only see things that have back doors to them. I don't see anything that's a that's a, a right. You're remaining skeptical. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is funny. So, so you're. It's funny that. So you have a, an extreme leaning. I would suggest, Mark. I do towards yeah. proof and all and all. Yeah, shit, I'm so. still skeptical. Like, but the report that was published kind of helps alleviate that skepticism, just because of how thorough the thing is and how how much they're able to corroborate in the report. Um, like it comes back to the original eyewitness testimony of the guy who found the debris, never having mentioned bodies, never having mentioned any of that ex- like other shit. So like part of what explains that to me though is that like this Roswell thing blew up way more than than they would have been comfortable with. I heard in one of these documentaries that I was watching that as much as a quarter of all FOIA requests that go to the to the Air Force are about Roswell. Right. Like, it, it's also one of the <laughs> most... That's, re- that's ridiculous. It's also one of the most wow. requested pages on the FBI site. There you go. Uh, so so that suggests that there there's, um, there's enough of an interest mm-hmm. that, sure, uh, you could put some resources to putting together a pretty convincing... Argument against. Uh, debunking right, argument right. and theory and, and body of... Uh, of it is true of redacted documentation, you know, and um, and 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 it makes it worth it to pull to to, to throw out this gish gallop of uh, and you know even the threat of the Americans have got alien technology now, like we better watch out, kind of thing, you know, in mm-hmm. the world trying to create mm-hmm. that that Cold War fear or whatever. That's not Cold War, is it at that time? What is it, it was. It was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. throwing out that fear at that time, you know, like uh, they might yeah, even I... want to create a little, you know. Like, it's entirely Wait, possible that it could have been a giant psyop, you know, the, this whole, like, they could have faked a conspiracy theory just to make the Russians believe they have this technology now, right? Yeah. But that's a, that's extreme conjecture. I have nothing to back that up with. <laughs> that's, no, but I mean, that's another point. But the, the telephone yeah. game of time, you know. That's uh, just it. The telephone game of time is what creates yeah, right. the conspiracy theory in a way. Yeah, yeah. You know, just because, like I said, the amount of time that's, that's passed between then and now it gives people enough of an opportunity to start thinking about, well, what if this and this and this? So can we talk a little bit about the people that that were there going, no, man, like it was a, it was a UFO. I saw it. Like, a, isn't there a farmer that said he had some stuff that was uh, that was yeah, crazy? Yeah, so, so the, 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 the farmer was uh, was the first one that had brought home like a, one of these little the beams sticks. with the, the sticks or beams. He said it was like an I-beam kind yeah. of shape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that uh, and and that it had like those hieroglyphics on it, those the, that alien writing right, on the, it. The, the and he also had he also had some of the foil that uh, what he described was that that the foil you couldn't like crease it or anything like that. So like if you if you bunch it up, it it sort of automatically right. unfurls and, and retakes its shape. So does that exist? It's called neoprene. 
So it is an existent thing. It's and a thing. It did, it's it's it used did in high exist. altitude balloons. Right, okay. So it did exist back then. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's like a silvery <laughs> inter- <laughs> Okay, yeah, then. It could, could very well be <laughs> just neoprene. Um, and, uh, yeah, okay. What about Majestic 12? Okay. Do you know anything about Majestic 12? Uh, I great album. <laughs> <laughs> let's okay. Let's. What do you know about Majestic Twelve? Because I didn't have. Well, I, I just know that this seems to be like we haven't even touched on it. We haven't mentioned it or hinted at it at all, mm-hmm. and and we're already like an hour into our nearly an hour into our talk. Um, well, let's just and, 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 rub and, up against and, it now. And in all <laughs> the, well, let's rub up against it. So so in in the research that I've been doing this week, it's all over this stuff, and like the the documents that they claim are leaked. Uh, well, let's start, they're let's start they're directly let's define majestic labeled first. as part of what is, yeah, what is this? What is this? So it's like this. some kind of group of twelve super high level um, uh, uh, government agents, or or, or you know, okay. it, yeah, it, could, yeah, yeah. it could be like the, the the director of the CIA or the the, the Secretary of Defense or whatever, right. and uh, like twelve other people, and this was created back in. Um, in the 40s uh, by a guy named Forrestal and um, and anyway this uh, this group is meant to actually be uh, um, uh, I think investigating the UFO idea Mm -hmm. Um, and Forrestal incidentally uh, apparently killed himself in 49, two years after Didn't Roswell. he throw himself out a window? Apparently he, quote unquote, threw himself out a window. <laughs> he defenestrated himself. <laughs> threw himself. himself. <laughs> out, out the window of a hospital, which apparently he ha- he was in for depression. Right. He was there for like observation or something at the time because of yeah. depression or some other mental health yeah. issue. Yeah, okay. And yeah, report supposedly he threw himself out a window. So again, conspiracy theory saying maybe he was murdered by the rest yeah. of okay, or well, someone who's, what are these this, who's, who's what are these this people high up, all this all this clearance and stuff. He's obviously got a lot of and didn't it happen, like, a lot of didn't it happen experience all of a sudden? and background and like wasn't it like a like kind of like uh, all of this mental health stuff kind of happened all at once with this guy, right? It was it was a surprising kind of twist because I think he was getting somewhere with his research or something and they thought he was getting yeah. too close to the truth maybe I don't know yeah that's what the, so, so that's I mean, what the story says okay well what do these guys know and what are they claiming though these uh, so you're saying these high uh, these high ranking dudes 12 yeah. of them so 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 there's there's some documentation that's been leaked that has like correspondence between like the FBI director uh, um, uh, LBJ so leaked no no not LBJ um, sorry leaked when uh, um, leaked what? then or leaked no now? leaked more recently more recently okay okay yeah and uh, and it's marked as like ultra top secret, uh, cosmic clearance or something. Yeah. So what are they claiming though? These people. Well, in 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 some of these majestic twelve labeled documents, they're they're they're, they're talking about uh, sightings of UFOs, and the 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 people, the witnesses, and people that are reporting these sightings are other people in the military, and they're describing things that the military is not capable of and uh, right, right. they also talk about like uh, the, the the EBEs the extraterrestrial biological entities apparently uh, close to two dozen uh, EBEs had been collected uh, by the early 50s is there anything about crashes or yeah okay. um, is um, Roswell in there at all or yeah well I think the 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 um yeah Roswell is in there uh, and uh, and they talk about like bodies being collected from Roswell, um, but th- like again, all this stuff could be could be stuff that's just manufactured now by like right. 4chaners or whatever. Well, that's gonna be my question. Oh, like, right. Is there anything out there to support any of these Majestic Twelve claims right. that you've been able to? Well, find? so the Majestic the 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 the, the, like the, the group the, existed. The Majestic Twelve group that existed. Yeah, but like, any of like, the like I remember that... I remember reading about about that way back in the nineties yeah, yeah. when I was still in high school. Right. And and first, uh, you know, entertaining myself with UFO shit. <laughs> um, uh, so that existed, um, but any of the documentation that's been leaked or whatever related to Majestic Twelve, I can't speak to the right. right we can't speak to the UFO. And that, that's one of the problems with these conspiracy conspiracy theories. Like th- that movie that you shared with us, Luke, uh, or the the documentary. They're parading this long line of professional or like eyewitness people who have 
really compelling stories. Yeah. They're extremely compelling. That and we, great credentials. Great credentials. Well, right. There's, and, there's presidents and they saying also there's have, your... They're also recorded to have been close to, to things yeah. like so that they were actually in a position to, to, to be able to, to see the things that they're claiming. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So but my issue is, regardless of how credible they are, regardless of how high-ranking these people are, all we have is their word. Yeah. Well, but that's and that's all we can have. I, I guess it does come down yeah. to uh, you have to see it for yourself to, to believe, I guess, right. and then you can make the declaration that you know, mm -hmm. and others still just believe around you. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. not but much we can really do. Right? In the absence no. of independently verifiable evidence, my default position has to be I don't know. Like I can't just trust someone's word for this, mm -hmm. especially if it's something of this high caliber. Right, right, right. You know, like yeah. I just it just that doesn't sit well with me. Like, I can't just go out and, like, okay, so this colonel who worked in the Air Force for so, so much time says that he was part of this UFO conspiracy. Yeah. Great. Can he approve it to me? Can I go out and somehow test what Well, his, able, his what credibility uh, must at least give you a few notches uh, on, course, on the percentage. Of, of course. There. But yeah. if you cannot provide evidence to back up your claim... To me, you're just saying something, regardless of how high-ranking you are or how credible you may appear. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. no, what, what, <laughs> but even the idea of confabulation and stuff, it doesn't require uh, um, casting aspersions on people's motives. You know, mm -hmm. like like we're all vulnerable com to confabulation. We all right. have, we're all made of the same type of uh, uh, vulnerable, Stardust. imperfect brain and mm -hmm. uh, speak uh, for yourself and psychology, right? Yeah. And when you when you get a bunch of people who you want to tell the same kind of story, like the act of confabulation, kind of uh, it kind of it kind of works in that group mindset kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone could be kind of misremembering something to back up another aspect of the story someone else is telling, and that creates the rest of the conspiracy. Right. You know? The conspiracy mm -hmm. could be self fulfilling in that regard. Yeah. 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 Well, like, for example, not shortly, uh, I think a year after Roswell was this other incident uh, uh, in Aztec, right. uh, New Mexico. And that's, that's another one where it's reputed to have, uh, have found um, bodies, uh, aliens, yeah, alien bodies. Uh, and so, uh, so even, even within people who are believing, who are ostensibly believing these alien body stories, even there, are, even some people in there are suggesting that there's confabulation, that no bodies were found at Roswell, the bodies that were found, the stories of bodies being found are, are, are taken from, from Majestic. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, like, this idea of confabulation, it's, it's not just... Uh, like establishment debunkers that are throwing that out, right. out out there, even even believers are 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 are, are uh, acknowledging the problem. Right, right, right. Right, and that's a huge problem when it comes to this kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. how reliable is human memory, after all? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a huge problem of proof. Proof in general is, is yeah, difficult. The, it's to the work burden of proof. Yeah. Like the burden of proof rests with the person making the claim, and. All these UFO conspiracy theorists, all these people who believe in the story, it's up to them to prove it with actual evidence, not just but, word of mouth, not just a certain memory that they that they have. But you know? then you get you get like an inherent problem with the concept of conspiracy in the first place, which is all about uh, 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 destroying and and eliminating any possible proof. Right. You know, the whole thing is about subterfuge. Mm -hmm. So, so it's all about, uh, it's all about like any proof that you might find. They make sure that that it's it's uh, eliminated. You know, that you don't get to it. So, right. um, to me, that seems like a cop out. Like that's their that's their get out of jail free card. Well, of course it, you can't find evidence because they destroyed it. part of the conspiracy, bra. What do yeah, you do? yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it it's a cop out, but it's also one that can't be argued against. Like it's it's a, one of those unfalsifiable yeah uh, uh, assertions. You right. know, like I mean, and therein lies the problem. Okay. Right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. We what can, can we do? <laughs> that's it. You know, that's why that's why the better position I think is always to say I don't know rather than exactly. rather than to. to to pick one way or the other. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, I don't know until you can prove it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I, that's part of why I'm I'm more agnostic on the whole subject, 
in general. I, I guess I feel lucky because I have seen you know a couple of UFOs, so uh, that's I can, right. I can you immediately have just go, no, no, like it's totally real, guys. Well, as a kid, uh, and of course, going back to the childhood memory, it's uh, uh-huh. you know uh, it's less trustable. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yes, I did see a a light, like a. Um, the equivalency of like a distant, distant airplane kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. flying in a straight line along the horizon, very low, um, and then all of a sudden scoot off in a completely different direction, incredibly fast, like uh, well, nothing that we can possibly do. Really? Yeah. How old were you when you saw this? Oh, you know, uh, maybe like twelve, thirteen, or Whoa. fourteen, or something like that. I, okay. I mean, I was certainly reading. Uh, books about UFOs at that mm-hmm. time and stuff like that, you know, mm-hmm. had an interest in it. So I'm thinking, yeah, early te- early teens kind of thing, wow. you know, taking books out of the library at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I saw that. And, you know, what's weird is that I didn't think much of it. I was just like, huh, I just <laughs> saw that, you know? Yeah. But that one, I, I don't have anyone to confirm it with. And then the more recent one with, uh, with, Angie, with Angie, both of us, you know, very skeptical, uh, her even more so, you know, like okay. anytime we talk about it, she's like, yeah, it's bullshit. And, and then I'm like, yeah, but we saw that, right? And she's like, yep, we saw that. Uh, the shining light, like following satellites at night. And then it seemed to flip, like flip its light over, like seeing it shine sort of in the, in, in the blackness and then direct it toward, I'm, I'm Doing, of course, with my hand, and none of you can see it. No, you're doing that, that that move that move that you see in the Arrival. Claw. In Arrival, when you see these ships kind of flip so over before yeah. disappear, before oh, okay. disappearing. So it looked that's like kind that. of what you're illustrating. Yeah, okay, so yes, and, but the light uh, shone down on us. Like, okay. it directed itself. I could see it going through the forest and then coming to arriving at us. Okay. And lighting up, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to say a, a, an area, because it was beside water, so I'm going to say... Uh, lighting up an area about the size of a football field, maybe. Okay. And the brightness of seemingly daylight, like, you know, lights at a football field, like full-on full, full on brightness yeah. kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, coming from very, very far away. Yeah. Like, this was very, this was a very small light that we were just following that seemed incredibly far away, and right. now was shining an incredibly bright light on like us. Like laser type of... Yeah, who, yeah, and we just ran, like, yeah. we ran away. See, and, I'm not going to deny you saw something. You saw something. And there I have someone to at least confirm it with. Sure. So my memory, you know, is is better, I guess you could say. Yeah. Two heads being one. But my point is, you, you saw something. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to argue against that. I know you saw something. You know you saw uh, at something. At least I can say but, that was a UFO. It yeah, was I'm not unidentifiable. Gonna say, I'm not going to say what you saw is alien. I'm just going to say you saw something. It's certainly something that's alien in the sense of we don't know what can do that. Sure, yeah. We don't know. Either of those. Yeah, things. I'm not going to say it came from another planet. As no, well. no, no, yeah, no. Look, another I just dimension. Don't, I don't that's know. fine. That's fine. You saw something fucking weird. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm gonna leave it at. You saw something fucking weird that we can't explain, and this that's was, awesome. <laughs> this was certainly in a time before drones as well, too. You know, yeah. Yeah. bringing up the idea of that. No, it doesn't seem like that's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have no idea what that was. Yeah, like people have suggested, you know, it was a space station. No, man, the, the, the light was station. way too bright. <laughs> like, yeah, the space station came down to the inner atmosphere and <laughs> shone a flashlight at you. <laughs> well, I mean, it could sparkle funny, you know, if it's doing something. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, things in the atmosphere floating around or reflecting light can do all sorts of different things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, things spinning blink. There was no right? sound, so you know, helicopter doesn't seem to 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 make sense there. Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, they. They, they do have stealth helicopters these days. Do they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are creepy as shit, man. So stealth helicopter <laughs> finding us? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The just... whipping up of air, how do they prevent that from actually making noise? See, that creepy. that's where this would not fit into your story. So it's not going to be a stealth helicopter because, like, yeah, they can mute the rotators, but they can't, they can't mute the displacement of air. Right. Uh, like, they're designed for, like, uh, to be undetected at a certain elevation. That's all. Right, right. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. I, I don't really draw any particular meaning from it. I just know that, you know, in a sense, I saw a UFO. I don't know what that was. Yeah. Mm. So I, I certainly feel more open to cool. the idea than, than you guys. Yeah. Uh, no, you guys are, are open, but closed off by, you know, the, the, the bias of proof or the, 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 the burden, the burden yeah. of proof, thanks. Like, I'm well, sort I think of like... there's, a, there's a scale, <laughs> yeah. and I'm, I'm again, once again, like, kind of between you and Mark, I think. On right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think I'm the best. If we're going to use the one to one to what is it? what's Dawkins scale of one to seven? One to seven? I'm like a 6.5, maybe. Okay. Like, I, I do feel that eventually uh, we will be at a place where um, 
there not being aliens amongst us will be absurd. Like, it'll just mm-hmm. be a known thing sometime in the near future, you know, in the next century or something like that. Like, right. we'll just have seen proof and, yeah. it, and it mm-hmm. will be there. Like, See, I think it... If, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I don't think I have anything else to say okay. there. Okay, if, if there is a conspiracy, I advocate for full disclosure. I want to know what the fuck is going on, right? If it is aliens, just... I think we've been, we've been bred enough through media and Hollywood to accept the existence of another species. Well, let's go out and say so. Yeah. Right? This One. is this is the uh, the the line that, that's is always the, this is the line that's always cited by like the 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 brass or whatever. At least in, in by in the witnesses who are talking about this stuff, they always say that the reason given for not uh, disclosing is because it would cause widespread panic and right. nobody can actually nobody can take the news. The, the, can't handle the truth yeah 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 <laughs> we're all not ready for the news or whatever right. that, that's the, the that's the line that's the which line. I think it, as, as time goes on gets gets more and more spurious you know yeah. as, a, yeah. as a as a as, as a possible right. well on behalf of motive. on behalf of critical junction now both Jill Mark and I we're holding hands now and we want all the aliens out there to say <laughs> we want you to know I mean we're ready we're, we're ready, ready now. We're your we're friends. Ready. We're ready. And by the Come way, on down, if, guys. Uh, if, alien, if any aliens are listening and want to sponsor the show, <laughs> <laughs> Please. we're willing to oh, accept advanced favorite. technology, um, <laughs> preferably in the form of some kind of portal gun. <laughs> yeah. There's your Rick and Morty reference for the day. Love it. <laughs> so any closing thoughts on the, uh, the Roswell idea? Well, um, I mean, we're talking about disclosure, and this summer... Um, apparently uh, a lot of documentation on Roswell has been declassified this summer so um, I mean we have to wait for somebody to put in a FOIA request now a Freedom of Information uh, Act uh, request so that they can then uh, 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 look at the documentation and then and then that and then release it and then and then somebody has to publish it so in a few months' time, we'll probably be getting more, um, more stuff to look at and 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 test or consider. Maybe we can do another episode then. Yeah, we could. See what yeah, we think of those files. Yeah. yeah, as evidence gets released, that's yeah. certainly something to. Consider. I find it kind of funny actually that at the same time as this this official disclosure has happened, there was that leak of like the the interview with the hmm. uh, extraterrestrial biological entity, right? Uh, and and other majestic 12 uh, documents I, I find it kind of funny that that happens at the same time this Da-da! <laughs> fun coincidence <laughs> might be more um disinformation to try and confuse everything you know at the same time as you release something real you release something fake and dude <laughs> keep the balance going uh, uh, so this episode brought to you by irish mist or irish <laughs> mist whiskey thank you Bree. thank you for bringing it Thank you. I'm taking my yes. final sip it now. Delicious. It's delicious, yeah. Yep. Uh, Luke, any <laughs> final thoughts aside from the delicious, deliciousness of Irish mist? Uh, well, it certainly seemed like you guys were leaning towards not uh, not believing the Roswell thing. Um, yeah. But yeah. you're leaning more towards you. Uh, no, not necessarily Roswell. Like, uh, okay. I mean, uh, listening to you guys talk, um, I lean more towards not. You know, thinking it was probably just a weather balloon or something like that, or I, you know, I, I don't know. There's, there's not enough out there, really. There's not enough proof, like, like Mark says. So it becomes a nice story. Hmm. Well, one of the one interesting thing is that a lot of these reports. Uh, so you had Project Blue Book in the '50s that was uh, put out to try and explain all of these UFO sightings and stuff, yeah. and a lot of people say it was, it was just a pure disinformation campaign to, 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 to right. make people, to, to debunk right. uh, uh, any suggestion of actual UFOs. But uh, it was noticed later on that all of the reports that they talk about uh, all coincide with, uh, with uh, areas, geographical areas close to bases, not, not just any... Uh, uh, um, uh, like Air Force uh, new technology testing, but specifically atomic testing mm. 
uh, bases. Right. Yeah, and that leads into the uh, the idea that aliens are observing our nuclear tests. And that's right. what, that, that's what got, got them interested right, in us right, right, right. at yeah. all. Yeah. Splitting the atom got them yeah. interested. Uh-oh, right. what are these guys up to kind of thing. Yeah. And one theory like goes idea. so far as to say that the these aliens are extra dimensional because the the nuclear tests are punching holes in the fabric of reality and fucking up their dimension. <laughs> You're messing. Yeah. Read that You're recently. Messing. <laughs> <laughs> You're messing with our reality. Yeah. Yeah. Stop but it. either way, Stop. though, the, the Roswell thing seems to be just such a tangle of, of this and that that it's hard to make any yeah. Yeah. anything of it really. You know, so. I yeah, look at that, any definitive. That's what gets me about the Roswell alien tourists who are like sc- scouring the <laughs> desert today trying to find evidence of what happened 70 years ago. <laughs> well, it must be. It must be quite the tourist. Oh, thing, yeah. Right? Like the, oh, the whole town is now set up. Like, I'm sure yeah, Nessie's hanging it. out in Roswell yeah. by now, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the little alien. Is that, isn't that near. Is that Roswell or is that near Area 51? I can't remember. Like it's this one. I think it's near Roswell. It's in Roswell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I don't think anything is near Area 51 because uh, I don't think you're allowed to. Except for aliens. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, so like they made an entire tourist industry of the whole incident that happened 70 years ago, and they're still banking on it. You know, people are flocking to Roswell trying to comb the desert, hoping to find a piece of the UFO that crashed there. Meanwhile, it's, you know, if it was Project Mogul, which in all likelihood I think it was, then, you know, they, it was, it's a balloon, so it's a really tiny amount of material, which is gone now. Yeah. Right? You're not going to find anything else. Yeah, well, if you got those space ball combs there, you can do it. <laughs> the giant combs. <laughs> Dark helmet. Yeah. So, yeah, my closing thoughts are there's not enough evidence to support the conspiracy. Um, I'm of the opinion that the uh, the case closed report is pretty definitive in its in its findings. So I'm more willing to, or more, more inclined to accept the official report than I am the conspiracy theory. That being said, I, I want this to be real. Like, I would love for the... Uh, yeah, I'm open enough to say I want this to be real. <laughs> it's funny that that's your only opening, though. I want to. I want to. <laughs> Otherwise, <I'd>... nah. <laughs> Unless you can definitively prove to me that, yes, it's true, then, you know, yeah. all I can do is say I want it to be real. Mm. But if the idea is to cover up actual military testing of new technology and mm. other other actual secret projects that have nothing to do with aliens, why do they keep coming out with stuff to try and debunk the alien uh, myth? That's a good question. Why do they care to do that? Well, why don't they? Why don't is, they propagate it? Maybe, yeah. maybe it is purely based on the number of calls they get. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holy like, fuck! We gotta just say stop something. It already. It's not alien. Shut up! Yeah. Twenty five percent. Fuck. God That's damn amazing. it, guys! Come on. I tried to verify that. I couldn't find it. Okay. No, but I, I just heard somebody saying that in. Uh, throwing the number out. Yeah, yeah. In no, one but of if, these interviews, if they were getting calls about flying fish, like they'd be putting out reports about flying fish, they don't exist, people. There are no flying fish yeah yeah i mean uh, it takes up a lot of resources to, oh, yeah. to, to answer a foia request you know you've got you've got a bunch of people that have to extract that from records uh, and actually go through it do the uh, do all the way the, down to fill us in accounting <laughs> do, sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> right there you go and uh, yeah so I mean, it, there is an interest there in at least uh, in at least uh, stopping hmm. unnecessary foia requests yeah that's very likely FOIL request? What's a FOIL Freedom request? of FOIA. Information Act. Oh, FOIA. Freedom of Information I was thinking, Act. FOIL, have you watched request. FOIL's War? I love FOIL's War. It's a great no, show. I have no idea what that is. That's I another on, episode. I learned about it on Craig Ferguson. He flips that over. He loves that show. Oh, I love Craig Ferguson. But uh, yeah, it's a good show. Good show, everyone. Good show. Shout out to FOIL's War. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. So it's, uh, I guess that's, that's it for me. Anything else, guys? Mm-hmm. That's all guys for be? today. Cool. Thank you for the whiskey. <laughs> Thanks for... Uh, this has been Critical Junction episode 21. I'm Mark. Oh, I'm uh, Luke. And I'm Phil. As always, thanks for listening, and we will catch you again next time.